this is photogrammetry inside Sweet Home 3D. You can do that too. I'm gonna just show you quickly my cat, which I did. Uh, and my model didn't turn out so well, you can see, but it's uh, good enough just to demonstrate the, that it can be done. And I'm going to kind of show you how how I did that now. I think from the distance it works a bit better. Okay, there we go. Photogrammetry is not that easy, but the tools are f you can get you can do this for free and I'm going to show you how I made this right now the cat turned out pretty well uh, okay so let's just get out of that and show you the program I used I first created a video using my iPhone and uh, this is the video here and I just go around the subject um, several times making sure that I've got a lot of um, good video well good a lot of good images that I can so I have to take stills from a lot of good videos <laughs> a lot of good images <clears throat> And uh, and you'll see here the the the, the face as a slight smirk, <laughs> which means her face is going to be mangled. So you have to your model has to stay still all the time, and so I'm just going to cut out those frames. There's a program that you can use called uh, Zephyr Light, and I'm using the free trial. And I've got a few days left on it. And this will let you use um, up to 500 photographs from your video. So workflow, new project. I'm just going to leave it default. Next, import pictures from video. That's how I'm doing this. Now I'm going to select my video and there it is there. Okay, it's going to take one frame a second. And it's going to try and filter out uh, blurry photographs. Extract frames and import into workspace. Let's go. This is going to take quite a while. So, okay, so that's finished grabbing photos from the video. And it looks like it's used every single one of them. One frame per second. Next thing is just to press next. So the category, I'm going to choose close range and the preset is default next. Run. This is going to take quite a while. So I'll come back. Okay, that section's been done and here it tells me there's a yes next to all the frames except for a couple. Uh, couldn't figure out where to where to where to put that one and frame 85 it's very similar there's nothing wrong with those photos I can probably try to uh, correct that myself if everything else is okay okay let's finish that and here we got is a a sparse point cloud which is you know, not good enough to use just yet. But it's, you know, it looks really good and I can sort of see the shape. Anyway, on to the next step. And that is to create a dense point cloud from this sparse point cloud here. Click that. Dense point cloud, click the next. Close range default. Next, run. Now this will take a while. 
and I'll come back when, I've, when it's finished. Okay, finished. Dense point cloud generation successful. Wow. Actually, well, lost a hand a bit there and a foot. That's not good. Anyway, it's just quite quite hard to get right this thing, this kind of thing. It's um, trial and error. And there's all the camera poses. You can see from the top all the different photographs I took. Actually, it would have been better if I took photographs from lower down as well. And perhaps, um, anyway, next section, create a triangulated mesh starting from a dense point cloud. Press that. Dense point cloud one, next. Close range default sharp features. Hmm. I'll let you experiment. Run. This will take a little while and I'll come back. Oh, well, that's finished. Mesh created successfully. Finish. And that's a mesh. Now, this mesh is, <laughs> looks quite funny face is quite flat the uh, oh well you know it takes a little bit of messing around to get these things right but, uh, now this mesh is created from the point clouds the colors are kind of just the point cloud colors just all merged into each other in, as a mess mesh so the next section is to create a mesh but use the photograph textures so that's this bit now so selected cameras all cameras let's just do that next next run This will take a while, so I'll come back. And actually, that wasn't so bad. It took about two minutes. So that was successful. So now this <laughs> face looks even worse. Uh, look at that. I'm going to go to... Uh, it, no, it, it does take a little while to get this right. But, it, you know, it's good enough um, just for this tutorial. So we've got something on her leg down there. Okay, now this program is very similar to Visual SFM, Visual Structure for Motion, which is quite a few years old, and also another program called Mesh Lab. So it's got the workflow is very similar to Visual SFM, and it's also got these options at the top, which also Mesh Lab has quite a lot of these. But Mesh Lab, you know, does does way more. But I can do everything I need to do in this program almost so what I want to do now is just cut out the the scenery around the model so I'm just going to use this tool up here this triangular tool and I'm just going to cut out that 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 and that and just press delete let's do do the other end and uh, if I double click it would just let me do that if I do that, double click, uh, and do that. Actually, I might be getting a bit close to a shoulder there. Let's just uh, press escape and start that line again. Resume. Okay. Delete, zoom out. Let's get rid of the rest of that scenery.
Okay. Let's get rid of that. Zoom in. It's, uh, you know, a bit more time. <laughs> She's not going to be happy. Looks, looks, uh, doesn't matter. The next thing to do, I want to adjust the height so, down to the ground level because she looks like she's flying on a magic carpet. So to do that, I'm going to use this tool up here. Okay, it's, uh, it's showing me the other original texture, but you can just ignore that. I'm just going to try and adjust, adjust this um, so that I get it sort of flat with the with the grid there we go that's good enough I press OK now to go back to the view I had before it's that one up there okay that's pretty good that I'm gonna export now and I'm gonna put that into Sweet Home 3D export export textured mesh I'm going to choose OBJ MTL textured mesh is that one to a file I'm going to call it agar let's go into Sweet Home 3D now right click in here import furniture choose model uh, there's my OBJ I just created open continue just gonna press that up arrow there we go so the front view right view that's pretty good continue I'm gonna add it as a character I'm going to keep proportions because I'll resize it inside the program. Finish. Let's just drag it in. Very good. And there uh, is a photogrammetry model inside Sweet Home 3D. Um, I'm sure that you'll get a better job if you spend more time on it. But it's very good. Let's just zoom into this here. One of the other things you can do is you can change the size of the model. Making it taller and shorter. Depends if you like place another object next to it and you think it's the model is too small, you can create a bigger model. Let's just get that right. Like that. Um, and if I just make it taller I said that's a little bit more realistically proportioned and uh, let's just move that like that that like that that looks good excellent and uh, you can do that too thanks for watching remember to comment like subscribe and share see you later